Hello, everyone. Today, I'm thrilled to welcome Zeki Ahmed. Hello, Zeki. Welcome to the show. It's great to have you here, man. Hey, Mio Drag. It's an honor, man. Uh, it's a pleasure on my part to be a part of your show, man. Oh, you're so sweet. Now, <laughs> tell the listeners who haven't heard of you uh, a little bit about your background story and what dragged you into this crazy online world, man. For sure. Absolutely, man. So, I'm going to try and keep it brief because sometimes when I'm talking about my story, I can blabber on a bit but basically i've been in the entrepreneurship space since around 2012 so now it's been roughly at the time of us recording this podcast it's around seven years and i tried a lot of different things so right now i'm in affiliate marketing those who know me know me for affiliate marketing for the most part but there were a lot of different things that i tried before i i, I was involved in mlm i had done e-commerce and a lot of different things but really how i got to doing what i'm doing now is what happened for me is before i got into affiliate marketing and focusing on digital products and all of that is i was selling physical products i had a couple of e-commerce stores and i was relying mostly on facebook advertising for that because that's what ha that's what i had learned and i didn't know a lot of traffic strategies at the time so so I got to a point in my business where, you know, I was relying very heavily on spending money for advertising in order to get traffic and to test different products and to test the creatives, the ads that I was running and all of that. And I didn't have a lot of money at the time. I was working a job where I wasn't being paid so much because it was kind of on a more, on a more part-time, semi, semi full-time basis. And so I wasn't being paid a lot and I had to borrow some money from people just to put into that business. And what ended up happening was, you know, my mindset going into it, a lot of people have this mindset, especially in e-commerce and drop shipping and whatnot, is I'm gonna, I'm gonna test the ads, I'm gonna test the products, eventually I'm gonna find a winning product. Now by selling these products, I'm going to be able to recoup all of the money that I spent on ads. So that was why I was willing to put all that money up front, even though I didn't have a lot of money to play with in the beginning, I was just expecting to, make money off of the sales and then put the, the new money that I made off back into advertising and it would just become a, you know, self refilling or refueling process. But that's not how it panned out for me. What ended up happening in my e-commerce, in, in my e-commerce journey about a year and a half, or maybe it might've even been almost two years in, it was around a year and a half or around a year and a half in to my e-commerce journey is I got to a point where I had to completely shut off all of my ads because I ran into the issue of cash flow. And anyone who's ran a business or who's running a business, who's especially, you know, if you have overhead, if you're running on advertising or and all that kind of stuff, you're you understand that cash flow is a major deal. Because even if you have a product that you're selling, even if you've managed to find your market and all of that kind of stuff, if you mess up on your cash flow, you can go out of business just because of that. And that's one of the reasons that a lot of Bit, all types of businesses, whether you're talking about online or brick and mortar and all of that, a lot of them go out of business simply because they didn't manage their cash flow well. And that's what happened for me. So I had to shut off all of my ads for my e-commerce business. I didn't know any other ways to drive traffic. So as far as I was concerned, my business was done. I just couldn't afford to continue running ads. At the same time, I was going through a lot of difficulties in my personal life, which kind of motivated me to make this decision because I had made some bad decisions throughout that journey, going back to this mindset of, you know, if I, if I put a little of my money in right now, even if I can't really afford it, I'm going to make the money back because I did have some products that were selling. So, so I figured, you know, all I had to do is those products were selling at break even losing a bit of money. Sometimes it was kind of fluctuating back and forth. So I figured if I can hone in on that, those ads, then I'd be able to get the cost low enough that I would be making a profit and it would be okay that I spent that money. So what I actually did, which was a bad decision on my part, was instead of paying some of the bills that I had to pay, like my personal bills, rent and, and some other things, I decided to, you know, push them off for like a month, two months while I take that money that I was going to spend on rent or on my electricity bill and all of that and my phone bill and whatever and put it into ads so that I can get this thing going quicker. So that's what I did, but it didn't pan out well. And I found myself in a situation where... First off, I didn't have the money to continue running the ads, which meant I, I didn't know how to run traffic to my store. So I was getting no sales. So now I had no chance of making money because I didn't even have an email list. At that time, I did not know to be building an email list so that I can retarget these people. I was just relying 
a hundred percent on the Facebook ads. So that was the first issue. But now I got the, the, the issue on top of that, that I had made this bad spending decision before um, with my money. So now I had bills that were piling up. I, my electricity bill was due. My phone bill was due. My, my rent, I, got, I actually got sent an eviction notice where my landlord told me that if you do not pay the outstanding rent within the next two months, you have to leave the house. Or, oh. or, or he said, I'm taking you to court, basically. So, so I was freaking out because I had all this money um, that I owed. I wasn't making a lot of money at my job. And, I, um, and I, I had no hope anymore of this business actually taking off because I, I didn't have money for advertising or anything, or even there were orders that were outstanding and I couldn't even send people the products that they had paid for. So I had to refund people on top of that. It was, um, it was a really difficult time for me. So what ended up happening was, you know, I knew I had to find a way that I can dig myself out of this situation. Luckily, I managed to get myself out of the personal issues of rent and all that kind of stuff by just borrowing some money from people and, uh, and paying all of that off. But now, but now I had to make sure to pay those people back because those are friends. I didn't want to ruin those relationships and all of that. But I knew that if I relied on just a job, I would not, I, I, don't, I have no clue how I'd pay that debt off because I did not finish my degree at university. I, I'm technically still a university student. Uh, I mean, as far as registration goes, but I haven't been taking classes for, I don't know how many semesters now. Um, so I didn't finish my degree at university. The only jobs I would be able to get were maybe like labor jobs, you know, that don't pay a lot of money. And the amount of money that I, the amount of debt that I had at that point there's no way a minimum wage job would be able to cover that for me. So I knew that that wasn't the route that was going to work for me. So I, I, I knew I still had to, even though I had, you know, my hope, I, I felt like I lost a lot of hope. And it, I really, I started to question whether or not people talk about making money online and people talk about e-commerce and all these different ways to make money. I started questioning about whether this stuff is even legit or if people are just blowing smoke and, and claiming to make money. And I know a lot of people online do claim to make money that they don't yeah. actually make. But, but I started questioning if there is even a such thing as making that much money, if it's even possible for me to, you know, live off of money that I make online, or if it's just a big sham and, and scam that people are making it out to be something that it's not. So, so I really wanted to give up, to be honest, but I just knew because of my situation, I had no choice because the other option was a job that was that would not be able to get me out of my situation. So I was like, you know what? I need to go searching for some other way that I can gain leverage and actually make money and get myself out of this situation. So the idea popped into my into my mind to start focusing on digital products because one of the issues that I had up until then focusing on physical products is with physical products there's just so many more costs that you have to worry about, right? You got to worry about the shipping of the products, you got to when people return products, there's costs with that. Um, there, there's just so many more. There's hiccups that can happen with your suppliers. There's so many things to worry about that you don't have to worry about if you had created a course or an ebook or some kind of download of software mm -hmm. that you create it once and you don't have to ship it out pe to people or anything. All you have to do is advertise it and then people download it. And I was actually, I actually had gotten really good at Facebook ads and my Facebook ads were you know, I, I was getting good cost per click and all that kind of stuff. The place that was eating me up when it came to my e-commerce business was not the advertising, but it was the actual, all the other costs that come in with dealing with physical products, the, the products themselves, the cost of goods, um, you know, shipping and all that kind of stuff. So it, if I, if they were digital products, my ads would have been profitable, but it's because I was dealing with physical products as once I took into account all those other costs that came with it, all of a sudden I maybe broke even or I lost a bit of money. And unfortunately, see now looking back on that, I realized that was I, if I was smarter and I, I would have understood that breaking even is actually a good thing because what I could have done is I could have collected those people. I, I was collecting those people's emails. This is a funny thing. I was collecting their email addresses so that I can update them on their shipping and all that kind of stuff. But I didn't think to actually build an email list and continue emailing these people, retargeting them so that I can get sales that don't cost me money. I didn't understand that back then. See, so if I understood that, I would have known that running these ads at break even, actually I could build a great business doing that because I'm getting customers for free. But that's not where my mind was at. So anyways, I started thinking about, you know, if I can just 
figure out some kind of digital product product if I can create a course or whatever then the only expenses really that I'll have to worry about for the most part are advertising I can run Facebook ads which I've gotten really good at targeting and whatnot um, I can even run ads on other platforms and then as long as those are profitable I don't have to pay a bunch of money for fulfillment of the um, of the actual product because because you, you create them once and they're good to go so that's when I started looking into um, into digital marketing or sorry um, digital products and I came across a book I don't even remember how I discovered it but it was a book that a lot of people have read Russell Brunson's book expert secrets because oh, expert yeah. secrets helps you with exactly what I was trying to do to you know to create um, if you want to create a course or anything like that and you and, and you want to build that tribe and you and you want to make it explode that's what expert secrets is all about so I started reading that book and while I was reading the book he mentioned somewhere in the book that if you don't have an idea to create your own course and all that kind of stuff you can still use all these techniques and he was mentioning different ways you can partner up with someone who ha who's passionate about something or you can become an affiliate and just promote other people's products so I had heard the idea of affiliate marketing before that, but the but I didn't really know uh, you know what it was so much. My exposure to affiliate marketing was I mentioned how I was involved in MLM like way back in the day, right? So I had some yeah. friends on Facebook from my MLM days who had left MLM just like I did at the time. Um, and now I'm not involved with MLM currently, but but we had both left and they they took a different route. They went more into an affiliate marketing kind of route, and I would see the posts that they would do, but it would be very spammy. And if you're in affiliate marketing, you know what I'm talking about. You got the affiliates who are out there providing value and who are, you know, building a legit brand and, and treating it like a real business. And then you got the affiliates out there who are just spamming the internet and, and, and they're just promoting spammy stuff. Their landing pages are super spammy, look like someone created it in a basement or whatever. So that's what I was exposed to. I only saw the spammy side of the picture. And I didn't realize that, you know, websites like Expedia, for example, if you ever bought tickets or hotels or whatever, Expedia.com, cars.com, all these kind of websites, they're actually, all they are are massive affiliate sites, right? So I didn't understand how big this market actually, or how big this industry actually is. But because I saw in that book, um, Russell was talking about it and he kind of painted this picture of building a real business, building an income online and all of that without having to create a product, just promoting other people's products. That idea intrigued me. So what I did was I started searching up affiliate marketing. I started looking more into it. And, and through that journey, I came across a lot of resources. I came across Facebook groups. I started getting involved in those Facebook groups and just immersing myself in the community and, and learning as much as I can over a very short period of time. And just diving in depth, just putting stuff into practice. And over the course of from there about it took me around seven months from starting that journey where I was able to leave my job and focus on my online, my online, you know, journey full time. And that's where I've been since the beginning of 2019 now. So it's been, um, it's been an exciting journey, still, still growing right now. I'm making full time income through affiliate marketing and also digital marketing. I, I've launched some of my own stuff as well. Uh, and my goal this year is to hit six figures. I'm not there yet, but, but I'm aiming by the end of the year and I'm fully confident that I can do it. And then from there, just going to keep, um, keep growing this thing, man. Nice, man. So sounds exciting. There is a lot of things you covered there. Now I watched your affiliate ninja summit mm -hmm. and you have spoken to a lot of like successful people in this world. Now, could you tell me what is the common thread, the mindset and the attitude they have that differentiate their success, like from the other people you see, in this affiliate marketing world, man. Yeah, for sure, man. Um, so, so there's a couple different elements, like right off the bat, that I'm thinking when you ask that question. So, one of the major elements that, before even I mention the other stuff that I want to focus on, is the concept of value. And a lot of people, when they hear the idea of giving value, they think it's very cliche advice or it's something that's very um, fluffy. But it's not. You need to really understand. See, it's easy to feel like it's fluffy advice and that it's cliche when you're not actively doing it, when you're just consuming content and whatever. But when you actually get involved in the market and you're putting stuff out there, you start to realize why people keep saying that. It's such a true statement. The more value you put out there, the more value you're going to get out of it. Money, money itself is just a representation of value. And I've spoken about this before, like on my Instagram stories and, and whatever. I go on random rants. But money, if we want to understand what money is, all it is is a representation of value. 
So the amount of value that you offer people, that's the amount that you're going to be paid back, which is why, for example, a doctor makes a lot more money than a janitor because the value that a janitor is providing is they're keeping the area clean, which is important, but I can kind of grab anyone off of the streets and show them how to clean, you know, my living room yeah. and then they can do a good job at that. Right now, a doctor, what's the value they're providing? They're literally saving people's lives. It's life or death. That's, that's as, that's as value as you can get. And that's why they make a lot of money. It's because of that value that they're providing. So it's the same thing when you're thinking about business, whether you're launching your own products or you're promoting products as an affiliate, if you really want to build an audience, if you want to build goodwill so that people will purchase from you and, 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 and just make money doing anything, you need to figure out how I can provide value. What is it that people need? What are the problems people have? What are, what are the things that are going to help them? And you become the go-to for that. So the more value you start putting out, the more, um, the more you're going to make. That's the first aspect. So the difference is now when a lot of people are getting started in affiliate marketing or digital or, or, or doing things online is they just try to spam their way to success. And I, and I want you to think about this. If you're just getting started and you think you're just going to go into Facebook groups or random places and share your link, I want you to ask yourself this question. What big affiliate or digital marketer, think about the big people that you, you know about, you know, Billy Jean is marketing. Um, what are some other names? Billy Jean is marketing. We got, Julie Stoyan, we got Dean Graziosi, Russell Brunson, you, you know what I mean? All these big names, Dan Locker, whoever. Who of these big successful names do you see spamming their links around the place? When do you ever see that? You don't yeah. see that, right? Because that's not what's gonna <laughs> that, that's not gonna get you anywhere. That that that's fighting for scraps. And you might get a couple clicks here and there, but trust me, the amount of work you're going to have to put in is not worth the return you're going to get. If you were to take that same effort and that time that you were, that you were investing into, you know, just throwing your links into random places and hoping people click and instead focus that energy on doing things like what Meal Drag is doing right now, having a podcast like this and interviewing people about their area of expertise and whatever, and just finding ways that you can put value and focusing your effort to that you're going to get a much higher return on those efforts than trying to take the short term approach. These short term techniques actually take a lot longer, but they also don't even really end up working um, yeah. for you at all. So it's kind of a waste of your time. So, so that's the first thing. Um, the second thing is the second big thing I would say is consistency, man, because I see so many people come in and out of this space. Like there's a lot of people who got started even before I got started. And people got started around the same time as me. People who I saw got started like, you know, a couple of months in while I was doing this. I've been on this journey of affiliate marketing for about a year. So I'm still pretty early in my journey, by the way. It's only, it's only been, it, it just crossed. I started last year, 2018 in June. We just passed June. Are we still in June? No, we just passed June. Yeah, we're yeah. in July. So tomorrow's July 4th for all the Americans here. <laughs> so, um, but I don't know when this is going live. Maybe I shouldn't mention the dates. Yeah, anyway, <laughs> what did you say? It doesn't matter when. <laughs> no worries. So anyways, um, my point is I've seen a lot of people get started and in and out and whatever, but the people who really get traction and who I see grow and their audiences grow and they're obviously having results are the people who are very, very consistent and who, who just keep doing this. For my own Facebook group, for example, my Facebook group has really been a driving force for my, for my growth as an affiliate marketer. And in order for me to have grown that Facebook group to where it is now, it required for me to be in there every single day. Like literally that was a commitment that I had since I started. It was September of 2018 when I was like, okay, you know what? I'm really going to focus on this, growing this Facebook group. I think it was the end of the month of September. And from there, I was in the group every single day. Now, I'm, now sometimes I'll take a day off or whatever, but that's because my group has grown a lot more. It, it, it takes a life of its own after a while. But, but in order for me to get to that point, and even now, I'm, I did a video about this recently, I noticed because I had taken a hiatus off of my group because I was sick and stuff like that. And I noticed the activity of my group go down. And now I'm back in my group. I'm going live every single day. I'm, I'm sharing stuff and whatever, because you need to be consistent. That goes for building your Facebook group. That goes for your email list. That goes for literally every aspect is the people who are consistent, even if it's little things that you do each day, but you need to be consistent in them. It, it, the, the, the efforts add up over time. If you're not consistent, it's just like the best comparison that I can make 
is if you're trying to get in shape and you're going to the gym, right? Yeah. So let's say I got my, my right, right now I'm actually in that process myself. So I, so I instituted a calorie deficit for myself because I got to lose weight. I, I'm going to the gym regularly and all that stuff. Now let's pretend what I decided to do is for this next week, I'm going to observe that calorie deficit that I have and I'm going to be in the gym regularly. And then I'm going to take two weeks break. And then I'm going to go back in and I'm going to do it for like a week and a half. And then I'm going to take a break of like a month. And then I'm going to come in back in for another week. Do you think I'm really going to lose any weight and I'm going to get in shape? Obviously I'm not, right? Not going to happen, man. <laughs> exactly. So, so those are the two biggest things. Um, there's a lot of different things we can talk about in terms of like what I notice with, with people who are more successful. But I think those two stuff are like the biggest things to focus on for sure. Yeah, I love it. The long-term game and the consistency which compounds over time. It's yeah. brilliant advice, man. Thanks for sharing that. I'll but. throw in one more thing, man. Um, but this one, I won't go on a long rant like the others. Is build an audience. Because I see a lot of people just trying to get short-term sales for affiliate marketing. What's way more worthwhile is instead of promote, just, just as one example of what I mean when I say build an audience, instead of promoting your offers directly, create landing pages, collect their emails, get them onto your email list, and then send them to the offer. Even if, yes, it might decrease the amount of people that actually end up on that landing page. Um, so, so you're afraid that you might miss out on some sales, but it's way more worth it for you to have built that audience. And then now on autopilot, you have an email list and you can send traffic to any list or any link that you want. That's going to do a lot more for you long-term. You got to be long game focused. Yeah. My two cents. I think that's actually the main differ differentiating factor between successful affiliate marketers and non-successful. I think you really need some audience. Yeah. Now tell me, if you were to start all over again, what things would you focus more on, on in your business and what things would you do less of now after you have some experience and the things you've been? Mm -hmm. So I would focus, I would probably do a lot of the similar stuff that I did do um, already, but one thing that I would definitely focus more on that I have not done is being much more consistent on publishing to YouTube. And uh, actually two things that I would do. Publishing to YouTube more consistently, just because I found that YouTube, as far as traffic sources go, YouTube is one of them for organic stuff. YouTube is one of the most passive. Like I'm getting paid commissions from videos that I produced last year. And I don't even watch those videos. I, I, I just get emails telling me that someone signed up to you to me or someone purchased this or you got a commission from this program. So I would have published, I don't have nearly as many YouTube videos out as I wish I had invested in over the past year. So that's something I would have done. My email list, I only started capitalizing on my email list like months into my journey. I was doing the same thing that a lot of people are doing where I was kind of focused on short-term sales and just making money up front. I was building an audience. Yes, I had my Facebook group and I was focused on building that. So I'm happy and I'm thankful that I was consistent with building that Facebook group. But what I would have also done is I would have focused a lot on my email list because by far the best audience you can have, in my opinion, from my experience is your email list. And I only realized that when I actually started, you know, mailing my list because I had a list for a while and I just wasn't sending them emails and I didn't realize the amount of money I was leaving on the table. Like I've sent emails, um, like what, what, there was a month recently, what, what month was it when we had the Tony Robbins and Dean Graziosi and all that? It might have been two months ago now May or something. Or April. I think it was right. May. Yeah, it was like May. So it was like two months ago or something. Anyways, so I didn't really promote that. That um, I didn't promote that launch so much because I just felt like everybody was promoting it and my newsfeed was clogged with it. And I didn't want to yeah. post more because I felt like, you know, there's just there's so much going on. And if I'm going to promote it, I got to come up with really good bonuses and then and then promote that. And, and I had waited too long to start promoting. Other people are already out with killer bonus stacks. So I didn't promote it at all on social media. I don't think I, put, I, I'm pretty sure I did not put a single post on social media, but what I decided to do, it was around four days before they went live with their, um, with their webinar. And I was like, you know what? I might as well send some emails out to my list. Even if I'm not promoting it elsewhere, let me just email my list about it. So I scheduled four emails to go out each day, just an email reminding my list about it. And I, and all, so that's all I did to promote the launch. And I ended up making a couple grand <laughs> off of those emails 
So it was just, I, all I did was send out a couple of emails. Each email made me more than a grand uh, in terms of affiliate commissions. And that's literally all I did. I would not be able to do that had I not built that email list. And this was like a fluke. I was actually expending, I, I was expecting to send those emails and probably like nothing really come, come of it because I thought, you know, everybody who's purchasing probably purchased by now. It literally was a couple days before and, or, or not purchased because they didn't open it, but everyone already opted into the, into the webinar through someone else's link. So I was like, ah, chances are I'm not going to get anything, but whatever, might as well do it. I ended up making a couple of grand as a result of that, basically doing almost nothing, typing some, they were really short. Just, I took the email swipes that they gave and just changed it a bit so that it's in my words. And that's about it, man. So that, that's the power of building an email list. And that's why I think, you know, if you're not investing into building your email list, I wish I started doing that way earlier than I did. You should start doing that right now. That's amazing advice, man. What is the most common mistake you see that affiliate marketers make? Uh, most common mistake I would say is kind of ties in with the stuff I mentioned before. So I would have to say either it's being inconsistent or it's just not treating it like a real business, not, not thinking about having to provide value, not thinking about, you know, long-term game, not building up assets and all that kind of stuff. I think that's the bigger thing, not treating it like a business because that, that, you know, um, that covers a lot of <laughs> different things that people do wrong. Yeah. Okay. A couple of last questions. I want to be mindful of your time. So tell me if someone is like in his journey and he's trying to put out value, they invest money, energy, everything, but they see no return and they want to give up. What advice would you give them? Because like you've been there and you mm -hmm. see other people going through it. Like what is the advice you would give? people who are in those yeah. in that situation so here's the thing things really change from where you are like depending where you are in your journey and actually i um there, there's a video where i was talking about exactly what you mentioned me a drag you know for me since i started in affiliate marketing it took me around seven months to get to the point that i was comfortably able to leave my job and just focus on this full time now that does not mean that that's going to be you and it doesn't mean that it's someone getting started because here's the thing it took me seven months, yes, right? But you have to understand before that seven months, there was seven years yeah. of failing at other things that I was trying. And while I was trying all these other stuff, I picked up things that I learned that all of those things now that I learned over the, the course of those seven years from failing of other, in other things ended up playing into the success of my journey in affiliate marketing because they actually tied in. I learned a lot of stuff about marketing. I learned a lot of stuff about mindset. I learned a lot of stuff about how, just how to approach building a business and building yourself an asset that's going to pay you. And if I didn't learn those things, I can guarantee you that I would not have gotten the traction that I got in those couple of months. It would have taken me a lot longer because those were just lessons that I have to learn. And there's certain lessons depending on the background and you know, the life experiences and where you're coming from. There's certain lessons you're just going to have to learn to be successful as an entrepreneur, no matter what you do. And some of us have a leg up, uh, uh, you know, where maybe we came from a background where our parents were entrepreneurs and they kind of put the right mindsets in us and stuff like that. But most people don't have those kind of backgrounds. So when you're making this switch and when you're becoming an entrepreneur, there's just so much, it's a, it's a complete shift of worldview. And there's so much that you have to learn before you can actually become successful. If you don't even have the mindset um, correct, then forget about all the techniques and forget about all the tactics. None of that's going to matter until you have that piece of the puzzle. Now, once you have that piece of the puzzle, you might not really understand what you need to do to get to point A from point A to point B. And that's something new that you have to learn. So there's just so much that you have to learn. Right. So, so the way I tell the way, so what I say to people is, you know, if you're just getting started right now, first off, understand where you are in your journey and accept the fact that, you know, there's a road of, there's a road ahead of you. And that's not a problem. The vast majority of people in the world are never going to go on this journey that you're going. The fact that you're on this journey in the first place, you're ahead of 99% of the world. So that's the first thing. Now, the second thing is you need to look at it again, like a long game. You got to think of this with long term. Don't look for overnight successes. Don't compare yourself to other people because again, you might look at, let's say you saw me when I got started with my Facebook group. There are people who are members of my, who are members now of my Facebook group that were members back when I only had like a hundred people and they saw the rapid growth of my group. Right. So they might be trying to grow their own Facebook groups and they might be comparing themselves to what they saw with me, but what they don't realize 
is this might be the first time that they tried to do anything as, as far as building an audience or, or all that kind of stuff. They don't realize that I have seven, a seven year background of failing before I actually got to this point. So we're not at the same stage in our journey. So you can't compare yourself and you never know where someone really is in their journey. Even if you think you do, you don't actually know. You don't know that they could have been trying to do this thing for 20 years and then now they finally figured it out. So don't compare yourself to other people and just keep your head down. If you don't make money for the next 12 months, this is the way that I look at it. If you don't make money for the next 12 months, it doesn't matter. It, you know what you need to do. And all of the different techniques, by the way, this is another thing that a lot of beginners don't realize is they think that they're going to find a magic bullet that's going to get them to where they want to get to. All of the different techniques that you learn about online work. Every single one of them works. So what, what you hear from me sharing about how I built my Facebook group or how I built my email list or all that kind of stuff, it obviously worked for me. It's worked for other people. It works. Now there's other people who are going to have completely different methodologies than the way I go about things. Guess what? Their methodology works too. There, there's so many different ways to go about doing this thing. So what you need to do is you need to pick something, focus on it, be consistent. And even if you don't make money this month, next month for 12 months, just keep going at it because eventually things are going to start to click and you're going to get to a point where you're like, you know what, now I really understand what's going on here. And it becomes very clear. Like for me now, what I do is when I have, I have my income goal that I'm shooting for. So for example, this year, my goal is by the end of the year, I want to hit six figures yearly income. So I have my income goal that, of what I need to be making per month to get there. And for me, it's actually pretty simple for me to reverse engineer what I need to do because I've learned enough and I've seen enough with what I've done so far that I know that, hey, if I focus on these couple elements and I grow these elements of my business to this point, that will automatically equal this much, re this much revenue um, for me per month. It becomes easier to reverse engineer that. When you're a beginner, it's very hard because everything seems kind of up in the air. You don't exactly understand how everything works, but that's why you need to keep at it because eventually you become a lot more competent and it becomes there, things become a lot more clear to you. I love that advice, man. Okay. Tell the listeners where they can find you online, man. Yeah, for sure. So if you want to connect with me online, there's a couple of different places. First off, for anyone who's listening to this, I want to thank you guys for tuning in. I really appreciate it. If you stuck all the way till here, that means you watched the whole episode. And I just really, really appreciate your attention and your time in Meal Drag. I appreciate you asking me to be on the uh, on the podcast as well. So now if you guys want to connect with me more, there's a couple of different places. One place you can connect with me is on Instagram. Go to Instagram.com slash the the Zeki Ahmed. That's T H E. I think everyone knows how to spell the. And then my name is spelled Z E K Y A H M E D. If you don't know how to, if that's we'll hard have, to remember, we'll have links in the show notes. So. Oh, they have links. Okay, perfect. So you can go to Instagram.com slash the Zeki Ahmed. There I share more rants, like the rants I went on on this podcast so far, and also, uh, you know, personal stuff day to day and all that kind of stuff. It, it gives me an opportunity to build a personal relationship with you guys. Now, for more, um, you know, technical trainings and interviews that I do with other people and stuff like that, the best place to connect with me is in my Facebook group called the Affiliate Dojo. So you can find that by going to my Facebook profile and there's links. There's a link there. You're going to see my cover photo everywhere. There's links all over my profile to my Facebook group. You can go join the Facebook group. And, um, and there, like I just provide tons of free training, you know, interviews with people who are earning six, seven figures and whatnot. And, um, and, and we have a great community in there as well. Like almost 3000 people, I think right now, by the time you join, it, it might be even more than that. So yeah, man. Yeah. I'm a member and I can't recommend it highly enough, man. For sure. Awesome. Links will be in the show notes for everyone who are interested. So everyone, thanks for listening. Don't forget to subscribe and until next time, take care. Goodbye.